to another reaction, another movie reaction. That's right, y'all. You guys voted. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? That's right, y'all. Um, you guys voted 1.8 thousand people voted for this movie. This movie won, won the poll. I do movie polls very often. Um, and it looks like the next movie that won... What was the next movie? Did I do another movie poll or was I dreaming? I think I did another movie poll, y'all. I normally am never prepared. Um, so this is nothing new. But I thought I saw... And I don't even really know what I do at this point. Everything is a blur. But I think I did another movie poll. And how many times could I say that? Let's see if I did. I did. And it looks like so far with 986 people who did vote is that Hannibal is winning this poll. So, um, that's exciting. I kind of want to watch Mad Max Fury 2. And obviously I'm going to watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes because it's gonna, I'm wrapping up, you know, that whole situation, um, which the first movie was amazing. So I really wanna get into that one. So I think it's just going to depend which one I do after Hannibal, cause it looks like, it looks like Hannibal's winning, but you know, Dawn of the Dead is not out yet. So please continue to vote. The voting uh, area to do that is on my community tab. So let's jump into American Psycho, y'all. Um, the only thing I know about this movie is that I did a documentary on Don't F With Cats, which dealt with the serial killer who used to torment cats, right? He started with cat, well, he started with animals, um, but he really did his one to the two to the cats. Um, it's all available on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. Um, but yeah, he started doing it and then he started killing people. I think he only killed one person, which one too many, right? As, as well as the animals. But they kept going back to this movie, American Psycho, where I think he took elements of this movie. This movie came out in 2000. I think this crazy guy started in 2010. Don't quote me. But he took elements of this movie into what he was doing in real life. So now I'm gonna get into the movie. Now I'm gonna understand what it's all about. Obviously, um, th if you guys don't know what this movie details, it is a drama, crime, horror movie. It deals with a wealthy New York City uh, investment banking executive, Patrick Bateman. Hot or Batman, I think it's Bateman, <laughs> not Batman. Although he started to play Batman, right? Is this Chris, what's his name? Christian Bale, yeah, he was Batman. Hides his alternative psychotic ego from his co-workers and friends as he delves deeper into his violent, horrendous crimes. I really can't see with the light going and then this light's going, it's, so there's a glare here. I need to fix that. Um, and there's something on my screen. Regardless, you guys are like, what's going on? Let's jump into this reaction, y'all. I'm actually just slowly waking up and I'm late per usual. Hair flip. Now, if you guys like to see this in a full reaction, it will be available for my Patreon members. Please click the link down below for uh, to join my Patreon family. The link is there, as well as my other link to my other YouTube channel. Please subscribe to both of those channels today. Hit me with the freebies, y'all. The like, the share, and the comment down below. Now, without further ado, let's jump into American Psycho and find out exactly what this movie has got to give. That looks delicious. Jerry Leto's in here? That look good too. That looks pointless. <laughs> Grilled free range rabbit with herb french fries. Our pasta tonight is a squid ravioli. Chick's restaurant. Why don't we doors you? Because Bateman won't give the maitre d' head. <laughs> Who's he with? And Weasel from Kicker Pea Body. They don't have a good bathroom to do coke in. Sure. <laughs> in a fucking menorah. Not a menorah. You spin a, a dreidel. dreidel. Oh my god, Bateman. Cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Oh, I forgot. Bateman's dating someone from the ACLU. <laughs> oh my god. Can't you all just give it to one person? <laughs> Wow, he said that's how she can hear. You're a, what did he say? That's scary. My name is Patrick Bateman. Patrick I'm Bateman. I'm 27 years old. Hi. 
I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. Good. I can do a thousand now. Wow. I can't do one. I love it, Chabelle. After I remove the ice pack, I use a deep pore cleanser lotion. Oh, so it takes you eight hours to get out that house. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask. I always use an aftershave lotion with little or no alcohol because alcohol dries your face out. Idea of a Patrick Bateman. Some kind of abstraction. But there is no real me. Lifestyles are probably comparable. I simply am not there. I'm rocking on sunshine. Well, Ricky Harrison has to cancel. You're going to say what? He's canceling or why? Occasionally, boxes would break at the Harvard Club. Anyone else? I need reservations for three at Camels at 12.30, and if not there, try crayons, all right? And I need reservations for two at Arcadia at 8 o'clock on Thursday. You look nice today. Don't wear that outfit again. What? I didn't hear you. I'm not here. And high heels. I like high heels. Ooh, shut the hell up. Cut your hair. I'm trying to listen to the new Robert Palmer tape, but Evelyn, my supposed fiance, keeps buzzing in my ear. Do what? Get married, have a wedding. No, I can't take the time off work. See how you just don't quit. Because I want to fit in. I'm on the verge of tears by the time we arrive at a spot, since I'm positive we won't have a decent table. But we do. It's my cousin Vanden and her boyfriend Stash. Oh. Oh. I'm fairly certain that Timothy Bryce and Evelyn are having an affair. Whether Evelyn knows, I'm having an affair with Courtney Rawlinson, her closest friend. More disturbing than her drug use, though, is the fact that she's engaged to Lewis Carruthers, the biggest doofus in the business. Come on, Bryce. There are a lot more important problems than Sri Lanka to worry about. And oppose racial discrimination and promote civil rights, right. while also promoting equal rights for women. Patrick, <laughs> how thought-provoking. <laughs> Hello? If we don't shut your fucking mouth, I will kill you. Crazy! You're a fool! I can't cope with the stupid bitchy! Understand? Really are the best. Then why can't they get these stains out? I mean, can you talk to these people? Oh, well, it's cranberry juice, cran apple. Really? Maybe we could do lunch one day next week. You know, I'm downtown. I don't know, Victoria. I'm at work all the time. What about a Saturday? Next Saturday? Sure. Can't, I'm afraid. I'm not naively amazed. Listen, I've really got to go. Waiting for Lewis to call me. He said he called tonight. Uh, pumpkin? Pumpkin, you're dating a tumbling, tumbling dickweed. Patrick, stop calling me Pumpkin, okay? Dorsey is nice. We're so <laughs> fabulous. Um, yes, I know it's a little late, but is it possible to reserve a table for two at eight or eight thirty, perhaps? <laughs> What's going on? That Donald Trump's car. God, oh Lord! Shut up. You know, Courtney, you should take some more lithium. Mm. Wow, shit! Are we here? Yeah. You're gonna have the peanut butter soup with smoked duck and mashed squash, and then the red snapper with violets and pine nuts. I think that'll follow nicely. Patrick, thanks so much for looking after Courtney. Dorcia, how impressive. Wonderful suit. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Let me guess. Mmm, Valentino Couture. How the hell are you? Alan has mistaken me for this dickhead Marcus Halberstram. He also has a pension for Valentino's suits and Oliver People's glasses. So how's Cecilia? She's a great girl. Oh yeah, I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. What Friday? No can do. I got an 8.30 res at Dorcia. Great. New card. What do you think? Good coloring. That's bone. And the lettering is something called Cillian Braille. Eggshell with Romalian type. He's vice president too? What do you think? Nice. Raised lettering. Pale nimbus. Why? Let's see Paul Allen's card. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. It even has a watermark. <laughs> I don't know what that scene was about. Everybody had a vice president card. Pat Bateman, you want some uh, money? Some food? Why don't you get a job? If you're so hungry, why don't you get a job? Oh, I lost my job. Al. Get a goddamn job, Al. You got a negative attitude. That's what's stopping you. Please, you gotta tell me what to do. You gotta help me. I'm so cold. You know how bad you smell? You reek of shit. Do you know that? <laughs> I don't have anything in common with you. Fucking loser you are. What? Hmm? Oh my god! I was 
What beautiful uh -huh. skin you have, Mr. Bateman. But not a single clear, identifiable emotion. <laughs> except for greed and disgust. Nightly bloodlust has overflowed into my days. I feel lethal, on the verge of frenzy. Hey, Hamilton, have a holly jolly Christmas. Is Alan still handling the Fisher account? Say hello to Snowball. Snowball says, Merry Christmas, Patrick. <sighs> Stop scowling, Patrick. You're such a Grinch. Uh -huh. What does Mr. Grinch want for Christmas? Marcus. Merry Christmas, how you been? Workaholic, I suppose. I haven't seen you in a while. We should have dinner. Maybe you could bring, uh... Cecilia? Yes, Cecilia. This guy's scared me. Marcus Halberstrom for two at seven. I'm very sorry, sir. JMB straight and a Corona. Would you like to hear the... Double absolute martini. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. Too late. Hey, I'm a child of divorce. Give me a break. We should have gone to Dorcia. I could have gotten us a table. Nobody goes there anymore. Wasn't Rothschild originally handling the Fisher account? How'd you get it? They don't have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Uh, <laughs> I'm good at tanning, but at home. He must not be saying this out loud. Great ass. Goes out with that loser Patrick Babin. What a dork. <laughs> Another martini, Paul. You like Huey Lewis in the news? They're okay. Oh, why is he walking like that? Cool album has a clear, crisp sound. He's been compared to Elvis Costello, but I think Huey has a far more bitter, cynical sense of humor. <laughs> is that a raincoat? Yes, it is. Hey, Paul! No, Lewis, it's not me. You're mistaken. Where did you get that overnight bag? Jean Paul Gaultier. Uh. When I get to Paul Allen's place, I use the keys I took from his pocket before disposing of the body. I calm myself and move into the bedroom, where I find his suitcase and start to pack. Paris. Hi, this is Paul. Been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. Hasta la vista, baby. Yes, Jean. Is Mr. Donald Kimball here to see you? Oh. Detective Donald Kimball? Bold striped shirt. A bold striped shirt calls for solid colored or discreetly patterned suits and ties. Hi. I'm Donald Kimball. You're Spider-Man's villain. Pat Bateman. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've been hired by Meredith Powell to investigate the disappearance of Paul Allen. Any questions about Paul Allen about yourself? Coffee? No, I'm okay. I got some. ours? No. Okay. Well, I, um... I haven't heard anything. Where did you go to school? Harvard. Then Harvard Business School. Your address? He was part of that whole Yale thing. Yale thing? Yeah, Yale thing. Probably a closet homosexual who did a lot of cocaine. That Yale thing. Where did Paul hang out? Hang out? Yeah, you know, hang out. The Cornell Club, the New York Yacht Club. He had a yacht? No, he just hung out there. And uh -huh. Don't you know this? I just wanted to know if you know. Do you have any witnesses or fingerprints? Well, there's a message on his answering machine that says he went to London. Had his apartment been burglarized? No, actually it hadn't. I mean, no one's dealing with a homicide squad yet or anything, right? No, not yet. As I said, we're not sure. One day someone's walking around, <laughs> going to work, alive and then nothing. You'll have to excuse me. I have a lunch meeting with Cliff Huxtable at Four Seasons in 20 minutes. That a little far uptown? I mean, aren't you going to be late? No, there's one down here. If anything else occurs to you, any information? Absolutely, I'm 100% with you. Great. <laughs> I haven't seen you around here. You just haven't been looking. Would you like to see my apartment? I'm not supposed to, but I can make an exception. Blonde. Who does couples? Couples. Yeah. I really can't stress blonde enough. My name's Paul Allen. You got that? You're Christy. No. Blonde. Guyanese. And very good spot. Choose a robe. Not the Bijan. And uh, come and meet me and our guest in the living room. Not quite blonde, are you? No. More dirty though. I'm gonna call you Sabrina. Why does he name these people? Don't you want to know what I do? No. No, not really. You work on Wall Street. <laughs> Pierce and Pierce. Have you heard of it? How much did you pay for it? Well, actually, that's none of your business, Christy. I don't want you to get drunk, but uh, that's a very fine Chardonnay. You're not drinking. I've been a big Genesis fan. Ever since the release of their 1980 album, 
was on Duke, where uh, Phil Collins' presence became more apparent. At the same time, it deepens and enriches oh my God. the meaning of the preceding three albums. This guy is so weird. This guy in a dope cat from the dress. In terms of lyrical craftsmanship, In Too Deep <laughs> is the most moving pop song of the 1980s about monogamy. Christy. Get down on your knees so Sabrina can see your asshole. In a narrower way. Especially songs like In the Air Tonight and uh, I Can't Stall On. Sabrina, don't just stare at it, eat it. What? Oops. Don't touch the watch. Can we go now? We're not through yet. Oh, he, they, what? You beat her up? I know, I know. There are no, no girls, girls with, with good, good personalities. personalities. The only it's girls horrible. with good personalities who are smart, or maybe funny, or halfway intelligent are ugly chicks. Absolutely. And this is because they have to make up for how fucking unattractive they are. One part of me wants to take her out and talk to her, be real nice and sweet. <laughs> what her head would look like on a stick. <laughs> I decided to get a new one too. Why they all vice president? I mean, what's the matter? No shiatsu this morning? Touching your that and drawing that stuff. Hold on there, little buddy. Patrick, why here? I've seen you looking at me. You can't imagine how long I've wanted this ever since that Christmas party at Arizona tour sick. Patrick! Where are you going? I've got to return some video tapes. <laughs> Do you remember where you were the night of Paul's disappearance? I had a date with a girl named Veronica. That's not what I've got. We'd gone to a new musical called Oh Africa, Brave Africa. At lunch in a week or so, when I've sorted out all this information. Can we loosen the news? Night stuff. Just there. He was too black sounding for me. Oh, cat. Will you call me before Easter? <laughs> Maybe. What are you doing tonight? Dinner at a river cafe. Listen, Patrick, can we talk? You look marvelous. If I don't see you before Easter, have a nice one, okay? What does that mean? Would you like to accompany me to dinner? Listen, where should we go? Anywhere you want. <laughs> Let's not think about what I want. How about anywhere you want? Where do you want to go? Anywhere you want. Just say it. I can get us in anywhere. Dorcia? Dorcia is where Jean wants to go. Well, I don't know. No, we'll go anywhere wherever you want to go. Uh, Dorcia, yes? Yeah, can you take two tonight at, well, let's say nine o'clock? Oh, we're totally booked. Two at nine? Perfect. See you then. Why don't you meet me at my place at seven for drinks? Oh, don't kill Jean. Oh. What a wonderful view. Jean? Sorbet? Well, maybe we shouldn't go out to dinner. I don't want to ruin your willpower. That's all right. So listen, what do you really want to do with your life? I'd like to travel and maybe go back to school, but I don't really know. Are you seeing anyone? I mean, seriously? Huh. Maybe. Now I've really begun to think about changing myself. You know, developing and growing. Did you know that uh, Ted Bundy's first dog, a collie, was named Lassie? Who's Ted Bundy? Oh, girl. 
forget it. What's that? Duct tape. I need it for, uh... Taping something. Have you ever wanted to make someone happy? What? No, put it in the carton. I guess you could say I just want to have a meaningful relationship with someone special. Patrick. Patrick. I know you're there. I hope you're not out there with some little number you picked up because you're my Mr. Bateman. My boy next door. So I'll call you tomorrow morning, honey. Oh, sorry. I know you hate that. <laughs> Look at that voice message. Was that Evelyn? <laughs> I was like, no. Do you want me to go? Yeah. You want me to go? He said, yeah. I think if you stay, something bad will happen. I don't want to get bruised. He's going to bruise you! You're right. Don't forget you have a lunch date tomorrow with Donald Kimball at Smith & Walensky's. He almost blew out her brains, child. The night he disappeared, any new thoughts about what you did? According to his date book, and this was verified by his secretary, he had dinner with Marcus Halberstam. Well, does Marcus have an alibi? Yes. He does, you're sure. Where were you? <laughs> Where was Marcus? He wasn't with Paul Allen. McDermott, Frederick Dibble, Harry Newman, George Buckner, and you. It wanted Paul Allen to come, but he had made plans with Tom for a while. Maybe he did go to London, sightseeing, drinking, whatever. I think that one of his friends killed him for no reason whatsoever would be too ridiculous. I'm not so sure about this. I had to go to emergency after last time. Just come in the limo and talk to me for a minute. The driver's here. Be safe. Nothing like last time. I promise. All right. Well, I actually might need a little surgery after last time. Really? Oh. My friend told me I should maybe even get a lawyer. Girl. Money is the root of all evil. Literally. Uh, half now, half later. I'm meeting a friend of mine, Elizabeth. She'll be joining us in my new apartment shop. Well, oh, maybe not with spice. We definitely at surf bar. You know, surf bar. Anyway, surf bar sucks. That was terrible. We met at, um, oh God, at the Kentucky Derby in 85. Or 86. Platinum card should give you a blowjob. Listen, this girl worked at a tanning salon. Need I say more? France. <laughs> Where's your phone? I've got to call Harley. Where do you summer? Southampton? No. Oh God, it's his machine. This tastes weird. Harley, it's me. I need your services. Translate that however you want. To the guy who disappeared. Didn't he work at Pearson Pierce? Was he a friend of yours? No. I would just like to see the two of you get it on. Let's not get lewd. I am in no mood for a lewd conversation. Come on. Telling me you've never gotten it on with a girl? No. Not a lesbian. You actually listen to Whitney Houston? Yes. I decided long ago. <laughs> No. It's hard to choose a favorite among so many great tracks. They can't it's take away my thing. Crosses all boundaries. <laughs> this world we live in. To empathize with others. Oh my god, he always empathize with Be corrected, but uh, I have no other way to fulfill my need. Touchy, touchy. I'm sorry I brought up the wedding. Let's oh. just avoid the issue, all right? Your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. I really don't think it would work. I've thought about that. You can have them. What about the past? <laughs> Our past. We never really shared one. Not terribly important to me. <laughs> oh, no! No! What do you want me to do? <laughs> what is it that you want? If you really want to do something for me, then stop making this scene right now. Stop leaving. But where? I have to return some videotapes. What videotapes? Oh, he does film. Here, kitty kitty. Please don't kill the cat. Feed me a straight cat. Stop that! Oh, 
Burning the Midnight Oil, Mr. Smith? Hey, now don't forget to sign in. Oh my god, my body hurts. <laughs> Patrick Bateman. You're my lawyer, so I think you should know. I've killed a lot of people. And in my girl, I in Central Park. I left her in a parking lot behind some donut shop. I killed Bethany, my old girlfriend with a nail gun. <laughs> I had to. She almost got away. And, uh, Paul Allen. I killed Paul Allen with an axe in the face. I have, uh, tapes of a lot of it. Uh, some of the girls have seen the tapes. I ate some of their brains. Uh, oh. And then tried to cook them at all. Just had to kill a lot of people! And, um... I'm not sure. I'm gonna get away with it. This time. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. Yeah, you're pretty gross. So, if you get back tomorrow, I meet you up at Harry's bar. So, you know. He thinks he's gonna go to Harry's bar tomorrow? Are you my two o'clock? No. Oh, Alan's place. Does he live here? No, he doesn't. I want to know what happened there. Don't make any trouble, please. I suggest you go. The cops aren't looking for him. She's taking his pills. I need help. Patrick, is that you? <laughs> She's over here. <laughs> Patrick, I can't hear you. What am I doing? What is it, Patrick? Are you all right? Patrick, so fucking smart. Jesus. Girl, you maybe you should call the cops. He might need help. So, did he kill people or not? Patrick Bateman. What's that say? Bateman. I got a wild eye. Looked at the Bryce office. Girl, hey, look, Bryce is back. He's drinking mineral water. I'm not going anywhere unless we have a reservation. The Cirque Flamingo East. Face it, the Japanese will own most of this country by what? the end of the night. <laughs> Shut up, Torrance. They will not. Jesus, yes. That was hilarious. That was you, wasn't it? Yeah, naturally. Bateman, killing Allen in the escort group. By the way, Davis, how's Cynthia? You're still seeing her, right, Davis? Wait, how? What do you mean? Your joke was amusing. But come on, man. You had one fatal flaw. The boring, spineless, lightweight. Now, if you said Bryce or McDermott. I killed him. I'm Patrick Bateman. The whole message I left on your machine is true. Don't you know who I am? I'm not Davis. I'm Patrick Bateman. I killed Paul Allen. And I liked it. And I don't find this funny anymore. It never was supposed to be. Why isn't it possible? Because I had dinner with Paul Allen twice in London. Just ten days ago. No, you... Now, if you'll excuse me. So, like, did he dream this? Oh, what was happening? What? And I believe there's now the growing sense that we can accomplish more to come out of the Iran-Contra mess. How can he lie like right that? Now, I mean, I'm not really hungry, but I'd like to have reservations someplace. How can you be so fucking... I don't know. So fucking zany about. I'm just a happy camper. <laughs> Rocking and rolling. He presents himself as this harmless old codger, but... Inside. Inside, yes, inside. Believe it or not, Bryce, we're actually listening to you. This moronic idea was a door to dry beers. I need a scotch. All I have in common with the uncontrollable and the insane and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed. Oh. My pain is constant and sharp. And I do not hope for a better world for anyone. I want no one to escape. Sheesh. My punishment continues to elude me. And I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. Me either. This confession has meant nothing. What the fuck? <laughs> well, well, uh, that's it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this means. But so that movie was insane, gory, it was actually kind of scary. Um, and then at the ending, I was like, wait, what happened? So I had to look it up, y'all. Let's have a moment. Gather around. 
the table. Um, so it says American Psycho explains what it really means. Patrick Bateman in American, Psy American Psycho symbolizes the violence of corporate greed through his casual cruelty and violent sadism. Sadism. I don't know what that word means. The ambigu ambiguous ending of American Psycho questions ba Bateman's motives and demonstrates the callousness of his friends and colleagues. I still don't know what the point of um, this movie was. Um, its meaning is commentary inherited of violence and corporate greed. So corporate greed, where corporate greed, corporate greed, corporate greed. I'm trying to connect with their theory about corporate greed. Um, was American Psycho all in his head? The writer and the L word actress, whatever, has also been ad adamant that the American, <laughs> I'm learning how to read, uh, learn, uh, adamant that the American Psycho ending explained that Bateman was the killer, was the killer all along. While it's true that Patrick is experiencing illusions and hallucinations, it doesn't mean that the murderers, murders aren't in his head. So are they in his head? Are they not in his head? What is happening? And well, it can't be in his head because he was just saying that Pat that he went to, he went to um, he he that. So did Patrick Bateman really kill Paul Allen? It's still unclear if Jared. That was Jared Leto. I didn't know Jared Leto was. Oh, I see it now. Jared Leto played Paul Allen. I didn't even realize that was Jared Leto. Um. Bateman and the viewer will never know for certain whether he killed a colleague. It looked like the girl with the red hair was still there that we thought he killed too. Okay, so this movie was insane. Um, I'm very confused. I guess it's left to interpretation. So I saw the resemblance of the guy in Don't F With Cats where the guy in Don't F With Cat was like very full of himself. He was, he was insane too. He was just like this character and then you saw he had delusions too, but it took hours. He thought he was so pretty. He looked very similar to this guy. Um, he took the guy who said, don't, the guy in Don't F with Cats, who is an actual serial killer, he's in uh, prison right now. He took it from this movie, and there's another movie, which I can't remember what it was, but I think it was a woman that was a killer, I believe. Don't quote me. Um, but there's so many resemblance in here between the music. That in, that in the documentary you learn about that and then the killing and then also the gay then the guy had a crush on him like the gay guy like the gay guy had a crush on him and then he, like he freaked out there's so much things that you could talk about in this movie and try to figure it out overall this movie i would give an eight because it was so effing creepy and like there's so many twists and turns that you don't know what's going on. And it never leaves you bored. I was never bored in it. I was always trying to be like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? What's what's gonna happen next? Once he killed that old man and then stumped out a dog, I and I threw my headphones as I spit all over the place. Um, I was like, okay, I'm clocked in for work. So it just, it was, it was, this movie was insane. By the ending of this movie and trying to figure out what everything meant, I was like, okay, so this guy is like, the, first I thought we were going to where he didn't actually kill anybody and he was delusional because we went to the house and Paul Allen what, doesn't even live there. So I was like, and then none of the bodies were there. So I was like, okay, this whole time he thought this, it was all, it was all a dream. I used to read Word of Magazine, so I'm Pepper, heavy dip in a limousine. Um, figure where that came from. But, so I was like, okay, so that's where we're going. That's what this movie is about. Oh my God. But then it kind of wasn't about what I was thinking about. So I don't know. Um, the performances was on par. Loved the performances. Everybody who was acting here. By the way, 2000s, when was this supposed to be? Where was this filmed? As in, what era? Like this wasn't 2000s, these were them big old telephones. Um, and then, by the way, shout out to the guy who played um, Spider-Man's villain, Green Goblin, as well as, what's that girl's name? The lady in here who played um, his girlfriend or a uh, fiance. So you have Jared Leto, who I really didn't know that was Jared Leto. Um, damn, who acted in here? Let me get their names. 
Let's get their name, shall we? Um, American Psycho. And the film for it to be 2000s, I was like, once it started, I was this seems like an early 90s film or a 90s film over. The movie gives you very 90s, not 2000s. I guess it maybe just came out in 2000s. Um, like January 1st. Uh, when did this movie come out? Tell me, just 2000. It is rated R, definitely rated R. Um, so we have Josh Lucas, who I don't really think I know. Um, Reese Witherspoon, who was married to that really hot guy and then he cheated on her in real life. Did he cheat on her? Reese Witherspoon. I, I don't think she's with him no more, right? You remember that guy she was with? She was married to, um, she was married to not him, Jim. So am I thinking of the wrong person? Ryan Phillip. Yeah, Ryan Phillip. Did he cheat on her? Oh, he's, yeah, they broke up in 2000. He cheated on her. I'm pretty sure with like a lot of women from what I remember. Um, but he was fine. Regardless, yeah, he's still fine. You should see him. Oh, he's, yeah, no, he's still cute. Regardless, uh, um, you know, I always gotta talk about men. God, I'm so gay. This movie was good. Everything was good about it. It's just extremely confusing. So if I was going to smash or pass, because that's what type of reaction this is, y'all. Smash or pass. I would smash this movie. Absolutely. Um, I would watch it a little bit earlier during the daytime. Um, and I would try to figure out everything that I missed in the first round. It's one of those movies that you'll probably discover a lot more as you go through it the second or third time around. But it was definitely viewable. Well, viewable if you like that type of film. It is rated 7.6, which, didn't I say an 8? I would give it an 8, which is crazy. Good job, Andres. You're welcome. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely, I kind of want to know what other people's views on this movie is. You guys know, I kind of go through these analysts. Um, that's not what a word I'm looking for. <laughs> I like to go through the reviews of this show. A lot of people says, I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. They gave it an eight, nine, eight, nines, nines, ten, ten. Now I'm trying to see what a bad view would say. Um, a lot of people are saying, is it delusional or real? So portrait of a serial killer. I guess you could say that, you know what I mean? Not guess. So here's a three. Yes, here we go. So, somebody gave it a three. A lot, majority of it was high rating, but this is a three. Incredible performance by Christian Bale, it is. Film itself is complete garbage. Oops! The only thing in American Psycho that makes sense is Bale's performance. Everything else is contrafeed, con con Guys, I actually went to school. My mom paid a lot of money for me to go to school. Um, and here I am, like, what's this there, man? It's shallow, pointless, horror, edgy, blah, blah, blah. Thoroughly predictable. Really? I would, I, I couldn't predict that ending. Utterly, this person, this word, neither shocking nor, well, this person's a liar. I, well, I, I wouldn't say you're a liar. I just say, I disagree with this person's opinion. Um, Bale is incredible though, I agree about that. This is much obvious. His character carries the entire production. In fact, all the major actors are fairly spectacular. There's not a bad performance in this film. There, I actually agree with that. Such a shame that the writers were, are more obsessed with making a Wall Street clockwork orange than they are producing something remotely original. I don't know where this person, and they are anonymous, which is, you know. Norm. Actually, no, it's Chris Gary. There we go. Um, I don't really agree with that person at all, but this person says, gives it a four, and they said, what was the point of this movie? And that's where I am. So let's, let's do you mind if we read just this person's opinion? I just didn't get the movie at all. I tried to like the movie, but I couldn't. I thought the beginning of the movie was actually okay, even though the story wasn't clear. I agree. But as the movie went on, the plot just didn't make any sense and felt weird, which made me made me feel uninterested. I thought there was going to be a lot of horror and gruesome sense, but there w were only like a couple. That's also true. I don't understand what happened at the end of the movie, and I don't think I'm the only one. I like the theme of the movie, but for, for me, the movie didn't have an intriguing plot. They give this, this movie a four. I actually 100% agree with 
everything that person said. Um, as I spit all over the place, apparently I'm like fiending, but I have rabies apparently. But um, I watched this movie, American Psycho, and now I'm like drooling for my face. Um, so who's the psycho here? So, <laughs> I have ADD. We're never gonna get rid of this outro. It's never gonna end, never. Um, so I agree. What was the point of this movie? What, what, by the ending of this movie, there was nothing. And I feel like this movie was definitely made for you to try to put the clues or put the, the solution to the problems of this m movie in yourself. And whatever you feel is, that's it. And it's kind of crazy because they didn't make an American Psycho 2, right? They didn't give no, I feel like if they did American Psycho, um, if they gave it like a part two, which I feel like we also don't need, but part two, there is an American Psycho 2 though. Did you guys know that? <laughs> it says American Psycho 2. It's all American Girl. It came out in 2002, but I don't know. It had to connect. So a girl named Rachel Newman has developed a taste for murder and will not stop at nothing and will not stop at nothing to become a college college professor's assistant. What was this rated? A 3.7. Nobody saw it. Oh lord, honey. A 3.7. That's why no <laughs> That's really bad. Um, regardless. My view of this movie is, I give it an eight. I think the performances was everything. And Christian Bale is, Christian Bale in this movie was gorgeous and we got to see him naked and I lived, lived. I don't know why men have this long, you know, some men have like this long hair and like a mane type thing. I think Christian Bale updated his look, obviously. I think, he doesn't do that anymore, Christian Bale. I think now he cut, oh, now he looks, like Jesus. <laughs> he looks like Jesus and Tom Cruise, like a little mix of it. Ugh, he needs to shave all of the beard, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Let me go off this reaction. Um, yeah, so that's how I feel. Please comment down below, y'all, what you thought about this movie. I'm very interested and would love your viewpoint. Cannot wait to hear. I would once again give this movie a smash. Its performances is what kept me um going and I wanted more. So I can't wait to see more of you guys. I can't wait for more movies. I'll see you all next time with more Smash or Pass. Bye.